Let's sleep, TV. Yo, so we got Jelly Roll and C Struggs in here with What Sleep TV. Like I said, I appreciate y'all for doing this interview like a whole lot. Um, but something that I always wondered, like as I know you over the years, like how did you get the name Jelly Roll? Like how exactly did you get the name Jelly Roll? Well, it's funny. He got the name Struggle because he represents the struggle. It's pretty easy. And mine, I think, is even easier, man. I was always <laughs> fat. You know what I mean? Like, I was literally, I was a fat kid. Like, um, and my mama called me Jelly Roll when I was a baby. And then as I got older, I had a partner that helped. This is no lie. His name's One Arm Clay, and he's locked up for robbery. And people think I'm joking because they always, I got robbed by the One Arm Man. It was like a famous thing back in the 50s and 60s, but for real, his name's One Arm Clay. And uh, he was fucking with me one day. He's like, man, we should just call you Jelly Roll. I was like, that's crazy. That's what my mom called when I was a kid. He said, that's fucking it. You're Jelly Roll. And I was like 12 or 13 or something. Like, ever since then, it just fucking stuck. It's kind of like one of them nicknames you didn't pick, people pick for you. No, it's just loud. I don't know how loud it was on camera, but you definitely don't own no WD-40 around this motherfucker. I can tell you that much. <laughs> now you know what it is, that screen door, I damn near pulled out one of the screws. Is that what it was? Stripped it. It's terrible. I'm a WD-40 weirdo. I run around my house with it and spray everything. You like that? No, I like the doors creak that way and hear somebody coming. You like I love it. I'm fucked up. Yeah. Now I'm more like that too. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I hate it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the back door creak right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's how you got the name Jelly Roll, and didn't like didn't, like two, three years ago, like you lost like a whole lot of weight. I did, yeah, yeah, I lost some weight. I, I uh, and gained a lot of it back, sadly. <laughs> Been working hard at both. Yeah, no, I, I'm still down. I was like 500 something pounds, man, and mm -hmm. I had a heart issue, and it just kind of changed my whole my whole shit, and I dropped like 200 pounds, like super fast. Well, it's crazy. I can still remember the day when you came in the house when we were living together. And you came in the house and was like, man, and you was like, fucked up. And he was like, brother, the doctor told me I ain't gonna be able to see 30 if I don't lose this weight. True story. And we both started that day. We both started that day. And you went to prison and kept it up and came home looking like Vin Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> came home looking like Dwayne Johnson. And meanwhile, I just maintained. No, but it was, it was only about a year and a half ago, though. You had got down, like, low, like... Real low. About 298. Three, yeah, about 295. And, uh, yeah, you, we're going to get right back. It's just that road, man. The tour, road is man. hard. We tour 150, 200 days a year. So, you know, you're drinking every night. You're in and out of different cities and, and eating and not, you know, on a schedule. So Living out of gas stations. You pretty much yeah. eat out of gas stations and Denny's and Waffle Houses. and It's crazy, man. Yeah. I'm sure the two bottles of tequila at night don't help. Uh, so how did you, like, what did you do to, like, lose that? Like, what, did you change eating habits? Or, like, what did, so, what did no lose? joke, Struggle was, like, 330, 40 pounds or something yeah, like that when he went to prison. For real? So, when yeah, he had, so when he came home, you know what I mean? He kind of had the real blueprint. And my wife is, like, really understands fitness as well. She's super in shape. So in between him and his partner, Popcorn, putting together a diet for me, and my wife cooking all my meals for me. It was pretty easy. It was only once we went back on tour that I fucked it off, you know? Yeah. Obviously, like, a lot of people in Nashville don't know too much, like, about your background. Um, you mentioned that, I mean, you grew up in Antioch. Like, I grew up in Antioch, too. Bell Road, like, the same. But I guess a lot of people don't know that. Like, can you talk about what high school you went to and just, like, if you did go to college and things, like, the things that you were doing when you were growing up? Right, well, so, I'm from Antioch, Tennessee, right? I was born and raised in Antioch, Tennessee. Uh, well, I guess I was born downtown at Baptist Hospital, but went straight to Antioch, and that's where I spent my whole life. Uh, I think what I realized, and that's what made me a struggle excited to sit down with you was, it's not that people don't know our story, it's that these, you know, these, yeah, the younger kids don't understand the story. Your age, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's like a lot of people don't understand it. I put out my first mixtape 18 years ago right so we're talking about 23 year old kids who are looking at me like who the fuck are you like i get that you were five when i started you know what i mean like we came from a whole different era yeah. we had to sell cds out of the trunk and actually print them up and shit you know what Downtown i mean every night yeah like seven cds it was a whole different world the only way you got exposure then was magazines that was like what you were aiming to get rid up wrote up about in a magazine you know like that was like 
the dream back then. You know, this was before blogs, before blogs. Like, I, I was, we were doing it before MySpace. Yeah. MySpace was our introduction to the internet. Of course, American Online came out years before that, but I mean, like, as a social media platform. So, we, uh, I remember booking our first shows 13 years ago mm -hmm. and using MySpace to promote the shows. You know, so it's like. flyers. Yeah, we had flyers. Yeah. You had to really go pass out flyers for shows back then. You had to go to all the all the hood stores and, you know, print up five, ten, twenty thousand 20,000 flyers and just go pass some motherfuckers out. Put them on the counter, places. Platinum Bound, New Life. Record shops, yeah. Go to Hickory Hollow Mall and drop them off at all the shoe stores. Yeah. Like that's really how you had to grind. Yeah, you really had to, you know, it was a different, a different, a whole different dynamic back then. So, I understand. So, it's like. I think when you see when you post a list, everybody over 25, 26 is like, oh shit, Jelly, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we know Jelly, you know, yeah. so it's just, uh, and I think that's what I love about what you're doing, man. I think it's cool because I, I love the youth. I think I love Eddie Nils. I love 615 Exclusive. I love Diego. I love these younger dudes that are fucking under 25. Yeah, 100K Tuck. Fucking love them, dude. Jug, all of them. Like, we were, like I said, I could rattle on Cushy. My name Cushy from Antioch, Wilkes' partner. We take my name Cushy on every tour we do. You know what I mean? We 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 love we love it. We we wish they would embrace us like we embrace them. You know what I mean? That's why we were eager to sit down. It was like, oh, this is awesome. Well, you know just, what I mean? We just the big home. We like the big brothers. Yeah, you know yeah. We're just fucking a little older, man. You know what yeah. I mean? We got you know he's got a kid that does music with him that's your age. Yeah, she's nineteen. Brianna, right? Bria. Yeah. Bria. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, me and you put our first uh, mixtape out together, what, 15 years ago? 15 years ago. Yeah. Put out our first group project together. Yeah. Well, okay, real quick, I want to talk about how, but well, I think it's crazy how, like, just not too long ago, you know, y'all had to pass out CDs, print up flyers and stuff like that. And I know y'all had to deal with, like, people, like, in the beginning, like, they would throw them away and not listen to them. Y'all had to deal with a lot of that. Oh, yeah. It's just so much crazy how... You know, now it's just Instagram and Twitter. You just posting a video, you know, link, putting a link in your bio. Like, is it a lot easier now to, like, get your music out to people? For yes. You? Like, how no. did you, how is it transitioning to the change for y'all? What is trans, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, you know, you used to have to go sell CDs, hand sell CDs, you know, drop CDs off at New Life or Platinum Bound and consign them out. You know, you come back and pick up your money if they sold them. Nowadays, I mean... Uh, what what me and Jelly make offline, you'd have had to sell 10,000 CDs in the street to a month, you know what I'm saying, to make that. Like what my monthly income is off of streaming and YouTube, you know, I got, like, it's ridiculous. You you have to put in so much more footwork. You Back then, to, to make money like we're making now, you'd have had to been on the radio. Period. This you'd have had to been with a label. The people People thought, from our generation, and I think this is what, separated us from a lot of other artists and why we excelled. They looked at this era, especially streaming the last five years, as mm -hmm. the death of the music business. Oh, the golden years are done. This is the golden years are upon us, man. In the next five years, the music business is going to make people billionaires. Billionaires. Where right now there's a couple that have made it through in a crew of music and they had to branch out and do liquor endorsements and build yeah, was, other companies. You know, we were talking about the other day. There's not a single person in the top 100, I think, list of the world's richest people that have made that have became that off of music. So, yeah, it's always something else, and that's just going to change, man. Yeah. It's, it's a whole different era now, dude. The internet back then, you got to realize when you were coming up, like when you were a starting out artist. You'd had to go touch people one person at a time, like literally one motherfucker at a time, unless you got put on a tour and then you got to stand in front of a bunch of people, but then you still had to go out in the crowd afterwards and touch them one person at a time. Dude, you're a click away from infinite amount of people, billions of people out there that are tuned into the internet right now that are actually, and it's changed the way people consume music. Let me tell you about this era, too. Let me take you down this memory lane for a second. You probably don't remember this. You were so young. You had to go to the record store and buy a CD, right? And then you had one CD player in your car, right? And maybe one in your house. And back then, you had a Walkman. 
that you would put your CD in if you want to listen to it mobily, right? I know what you're talking so about. So if you think about the perspective of this, to consume a CD, you know, you didn't get to scan through 75 songs from 50 different fucking artists to pick which one you want to listen to with the click of a button. You had to flip through a book of CDs and you had to pick one. You couldn't do that in traffic. I remember riding, smoking a fucking blunt and flipping like this while I'm driving, looking, trying to find the CD I want to slide it in. And I had to listen to that CD. If it was just one song, I just listened to one song I want to listen to six, seven, eight, nine times in a row. Why not? Because I don't want to have to go through the trouble of popping it back out, putting it back in to go back and find it later because that's the mood I'm in again in 25 fucking minutes. And if you had a five disc changer, remember when I had the Dodge and Trap yeah. with the five disc yeah. changer? I was the fucking man, dude. I'd go get the greatest hits of five different artists and it was like a whole, it was a game changer. You know, this was... I walk around all day like the dude from Baby Driver now with my AirPods in just listening to fucking music. I'm in a gas station, you know, paying for a Gatorade this morning, listening to music in my fucking right ear AirPod. We consume it completely different, man. And back then, if your CD scratched, you know what you had to do? Oh, yeah. You were fucked. You had to go buy another CD. And, you know, back then, if the artist was hot, they didn't have enough of his CDs at the store. So you might go back and he wouldn't be there. And you'd have to wait another week and be like, hey man, hold me one when you get your next shipment in next Tuesday. It was a whole different fucking dynamic, dude. Yeah. The internet is fixing to make people fucking rich. And I am glad to be a part of it, man. You, you're going to be an example. Y'all will be rich to all this, this glory story of the 18 years it took me to make it in the music business. You won't have none of that shit. That shit, y'all, people figure out if the shit's going to work or not in 24 to 36 months now. That wasn't the case for us, man. Yeah, like, just to put it in perspective, I was in the music business. I've been in the music business since I came home from my first bid in 2002. So, what's that, 15 years? 17 years. 17, right now. 17 years. Um, I didn't really make a dollar off of music, which I was bullshitting. I was in the streets and, you know, not putting everything into music all those years. But... I didn't make a dollar off of music, like really make money, a profit off of the music until three years ago when I came home from prison. And now I pay all my bills and live better than I ever lived off of nothing but music. Yeah. Wow. Off of a check that comes on in a little account from streaming and YouTube, Spotify, you know. Like me and him wouldn't have been able to do what we've done. Last year we dropped three projects together. Um, two of them hit number two on iTunes charts one of them hit number one uh, his last one just hit number two my last one just hit number three on iTunes chart we couldn't have charted back then without being signed to a record label mm -hmm. period you couldn't it was impossible back then you had to have a 12 week rollout because it took eight weeks for the magazine to accept you or not and that's who your main publications were, right? So let's say we finally got a distribution deal 12, 13 years ago. And they'd be like, you go turn a record in, and then they'd grab it. you turn a record in in March. And they'd be like, all right, we're going to drop it in August. Be like, fucking what? Mm -hmm. I got to wait five months to drop this album? Now y'all are in the era where, dude, we sit right here and write music and upload it tonight if we fucking want to. You know what I mean? And literally touch millions of people. Totally different game, man. Totally different game. Yeah. And I love it because it gives all the people that, <coughs> you know, didn't, that wouldn't have the same opportunity or, or the same voice or would have to go through all the bullshit that we had to go through. They don't got to go through that no more. It's, it's beautiful because it gives a lot of guys the chance to shine and blow up. Like, you know, 90% of people don't blow up overnight. Yeah. Even if you think they do, they've been grinding for years and years and years, yeah. you know. Um, but... It really gives them an opportunity, you know. So it's, it's a great thing, man. It really is. Yeah. It's a and to stay it. independent, you know. Yeah. That's what I was just about to ask y'all. Both independent. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, as independent as you can be. No, hundred percent. We're independent, like TuneCore independent. Tune core like, independent. don't even use a fucking distributor most of the time. Yeah, like, I got a I got a distributor I use now just because it makes it easier for me and um, to you know collect my money and be able to. But he's still on a 
album by album basis. He didn't yeah. he didn't go into bed nah, with the distributor have, and mm-hmm. say, I have to give you my next album. No. If he chooses to wake up tomorrow and put one on TuneCore and just put it out in the next four days, he has that right. You yeah, know like I, mean? I slick became a label without, I don't want to be a label, but you know, I just put out a record with my daughter, put out a, a record with my mama, you know, dropped my last record. Me and him dropped all the Waylon and Willie's, but my content's never going to change. My content's still going to be street shit because that's what I lived my whole life, you know. Um, are you going? Are you going to basically like take your daughter under your wing with the music? Yeah, she's going on this like, next tour. Taking the tour. I, I'm going to take her under my wing is uh, enough to guide her, but not too much to hurt her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like she's she's in her own right. She's got the potential to be way bigger than I, I'll ever be, you know, and I'm not gonna ever, like I'm writing a lot of the songs, I'm co-producing the songs, but at any point we get an opportunity to branch out and get a bigger producer or some, you know, other writers in, I'm never gonna hold her back. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna let her do whatever is best for her career. So, but definitely gonna, you know, she's she's up on it, she's been up under my way through life, so like, I'm always going to protect her and guide her in the right way, for sure.